So welcome to Bunny's Designs. This is a live stream recorded for YouTube and Ustream.tv and also for YouTube for people to watch at a leisure. I'm working in my Joanna's Christmas festive colour book because I don't actually want to put it away until next year. I want to finish it. So um, apologies for anybody who I offend, but um, I want to finish it and I'm enjoying it and um, so I really don't wish to put it away for next year. I want to actually finish this particular um, this particular book. Um, I'm using um, a little practice scrap of paper to have a bit of a play with colour. So I don't make a real faux pas and put a bright green where I don't want a bright green. And I'm working with the ink tense. Um, but I, I love this page, but it had such a bare space. So it was quite a long job and I won't be doing it again. Um, but I copied, I, I traced the image on the back because I looked, I thought it looked a little bit like a wallpaper. Turned it around and then roughly kind of um, sketched it and copied it onto the back um, like a wallpaper then I thought if I actually used um, some very pale colours at the back and originally I was going to use these um, Derwent uh, graphite tint which I love and I did in this page um, of the cuckoo clock which I haven't actually finished I've got some gold gold stars to put on it but I love these colours so much um, I have to play with the lighting a bit. That's a bit better. Um, so I loved these colours and I thought they'd be lovely as a background. Um, but recently I've discovered my, I've been going through my pencils to give away to my children. And I've discovered some pencil pastels, which is actually um, a portrait set. It's a, it's a, an old tin. I've had it many, many years. Uh, pastel pencils, and I've never used them. In fact, my daughter, who's 16 and a bit, used them for her last year at school. Um, and she's the only person that's ever used them. I've probably forgotten about them or not worked with pencils for quite a while. But I love them in this Bennett Klein. Now, there's nothing on there at all, and this book's been shut twice. So I can't smush it too much, but I love the pale colours. And so I thought it would lend itself to this. So this is actually, and there's a tiny bit better tooth, but not much to the um, Joanna's book um, from the Bennett Klein, because this is very, very shiny. But it still just had just enough. And again, I find it really difficult with the pencils. So I tend to have three colours as near to each other as possible. Um, so there's three colours in the leaf. Uh, in fact, I think there's just one colour, two colours in the leaf. Three in the rose and three in the, um, the fancy leaf pattern. Again, for the dress, there's three yellows. Um, and then there's three for the leaves and three for the flowers. And three for the the wings. I use the same colour blues as I did for the butter white fly wings because I love them so much. Um, so I really love these colours in here and the other thing is I don't have to use any water at all. This is just three pencils very lightly um, stroked across and literally stroked because I cannot literally do anything else. So I just very gently stroke the top and then just kind of smudge it in with the little uh, blending tool. It says it's a colour shaper. I'm not sure where I've got it from, not sure what it's for. Do not have any proper blenders. Um, I possibly will be going to an art shop, but I will not buy the full set of pastels because I can't use them. So when I've finished these Bennett Klein books, my daughter will be having the pencils. Um, my hands are just not particularly brilliant. Um, and I probably will not be buying any books unless I can scan them in and colour them digitally. I'm going to try that next week with a photograph. Um, 
so my art's going to have to change drastically. But because I saw this colour and really liked it, and you can just see a faint, there is a faint colour from there. Um, but hopefully if I just carefully shut it, it'll be fine. The only one I'm not doing that with is, which I will be doing in the next part of this show, is I'm actually using the pastels in this as well and again there's no water so it doesn't matter how thin or thick you uh, and where you are you can work with pastel pencils there is nothing on there at all but I'm not going to shut the book because those colours won't be on this side I'm going to finish the page and then I'm going to spray it lightly with fixative or hairspray depending on if my fixative is probably 20 years old so it probably is disintegrated um so that's the plan so because i found uh, and i've put the pastels into a sleeve oops in my dough went bag because i was so excited about it so while i'm using them i'm actually leaving them in in this because i love it you just flick it over and again you've got the yellows the oranges the pinks the purples the blues the greens and then it goes into the terracotta burnt carmine section um, it's a bit of a strange setup because you have kind of three colors for each color three shades so there's a burnt umber the, um, and then there's a number well a number is very dark but the the number f is 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 very pale um, so i was going to try and get the full set um but I'm not sure they actually do them anymore like that. I'll have to, I'll have to go into that. Um, but I'm hoping for a trip to the pencil factory when the uh, they had a flood last year, and I tried to find out if they were open by Christmas, but I didn't think they were. There's a pencil museum, and in the museum there's a coffee shop, and there's um, a shop where you buy Derwent. Um, supplies uh if it was near i'd ask for a job <laughs> or actually i wouldn't ask for a job i'd just go in i'd go i'd just go there and draw all day <laughs> i'd just go and sit and draw and and play with the pencils and the and the art bars and everything else so um i'd probably get kicked out for loitering but there we go um so that's that's probably going to be um well, it was going to be in the near future, but uh, we'll have to see. So I love the pencils and I love the pastels and I do like the pale colours. So without any more waffle, um, I actually filled the background in and I did it very roughly. Um, I'm normally very precise and I decided that the background was going to be a bit blurry and kind. So it oh, it's actually not even set. I've actually, I have smushed it with the little uh, blending tool. Uh, but I could possibly blend it that little bit more. Uh, but I, um, it was hurting my hands, so I kind of decided this was too big a job, really. So I've gone in with some Derwent Ink Tense pe oops, pencils. I've put um, a little bit of colour. If I just, if I just uh, zoom in a little bit, you can see again just scribbling you can put some more ink tens under there just scribbling a little bit of color so that when i activate it with my my favorite way of working which is a little flat dish and four riggers or three riggers and a liner a 10 zero liner uh, a number one Graduate Dela Rowney rigger, a number two and a number three. I think when I get to the floorboard, I may have to go bigger, but just for the moment, most of this will be done quite nicely with a, a baby wipe, a damp baby wipe. And this baby wipe's probably um, two or three shows because that's just how much paint you waste. Um, hardly hardly any and that water is actually clear so again i've just got one water pot and i just keep emptying the little bit out if i use the hydras but normally when i work with the pencils the paintbrush is completely clean by the time i've finished 
so I smudged this little this um, the color around so I put a little bit of circle there so when I kind of take each leaf out with a fine paintbrush I should get a nice watercolor effect just with a damp brush so just because I wanted to get going a little bit just just done there a little bit I put the flames in so I've just been having a bit of a play with some colors because I want to have a look at um, the wood effect now you can just take one color and you can use it um, a very light touch and then you can go light again and then you can go light again so that's three shades there by giving it three layers so if you want it pale then you want a shadow and there's the same amount of uh, pressure which is hardly anything and you do three different layers if you do it once you get pale twice you get medium third time you get a full color and the full color is normally very vivid because these are Derwent ink tense pencils so they tend to be very very vibrant but I like to kind of mush it, up, mush it up a little bit so just looking at this and I think that one's too I like that one and that one this one I've brought out for the basket which is there I'm hoping the light won't change too much I'm trying to move the camera angle rather than move the book if I possibly can so I've got some logs and there's the same logs on the fire so I can get rid of these at the same time and this particular pencil doesn't really smudge this will smudge because it's pastel um, so I'm not worried too much I actually pull my car old cardigan down and just very gently sit while I do that so it shouldn't be too bad if you're very precious with it you could put a piece of paper over it and then kind of work very fine and as you can see here I thought that was the background so I've kind of drawn it in and it isn't so I need to rub that out first with an eraser um, and I have an electric eraser I'm not sure where I, where I put it it should really be sitting in my little Derwent pencil pouch but as long as it's fairly clean I'm just going to take that off there because before I fix it I'm going to rub out all the pencil marks that I've got everywhere else but just at the moment and I do have one of these and it's um this isn't a, a not it's a it's like um a pencil but it has an eraser going through it instead of lead and at the other end there's a brush so you can kind of erase and sharpen your pencil so you've got a lovely point and then you can kind of brush it away or you can just use an ordinary brush it's good not to use a brush that you're going to use for anything else but I can wash mine out later so I don't think I've got anything else I just made the mistake there of drawing that in I think so I'm going to do the fireplace I think um, and then on the other side there's the tree and because I'm doing these in ink tents they're going to be very vibrant and that wallpaper will go in the background and because it's smudged and it's not perfect it's going to look kind of um, it's going to look right hopefully oh morning welcome to Bunny's Designs I'm playing in the Joanna Bassford Christmas um, Christmas book in fact that probably would be a nice brush to use when I do the floorboards at the back because I've drawn in some floorboards uh, so that was for the, the basket um, this colour here so this is for the logs and that's for the basket so I'm just going to have a quick look for another colour to go with the basket that's quite nice it's very similar um, and then I could just do there was a bark that I looked at which was I thought was just that little bit too dark mm, it's called uh, the bark and it's my favorite color it's 120 whoops and it's called bark and it's a fab color for highlights it's not black uh, for, sorry for shadow it's not black and I 
tend to use it in nearly everything. I do like it. Um, I could do with a little bit of a warmer one though. If you look, that's just that bit too dark. Um, and this one is sepia ink. But I'll just show you what happens when they are wet. So these will be for the baskets. So again, there's some, going to be some really nice shades there. And then that was the bark, which I love for shadows, any shadow it goes with. And this is the sepia ink. And sepia ink is just that little bit paler. So I could put this onto the log or the logs. And then I could just put the tiniest bit and again, very similar to the, the pastel pencils, you blend the, the light and then you go into the dark and that should give you a nice shadow. And then the paler one, I've got to be a bit careful because I'm right on the end of the, of the fold, the paler one, that must be the different one. This is the middle one. So we've actually gone from very pale to very dark. So this is the middle one, which should be somewhere in between, which is just about enough. You don't want them too far apart because they won't match. Um, and I don't, I think actually that's, hmm, I don't think I like that one. I think that's going to be for the basket. Yeah, that will be for the basket. And put those separate and then these two are for the logs so again I'm not sure if they're going to be the right colors I might use these two and, and bark so let's have a look and that's a bit too green because there's a lot of green on there and that's a, a little bit too pale in fact that's willow so I'm going to put which was willow this one yeah I think I'm going to put willow here and swap it with the with the oak so I've now got these two colors for the logs and if you're not sure of your colors it's just a good idea to do this yeah, I think those two will be quite nice as the logs and then these as the basket. Um, so I'm going to do the basket first because I may change my mind. So we've got a pail. We can draw them in order that we want them. So that we know that that's the first one and that's the second one. Oops, no, that's the first one. So we've got baked earth and then we've got burnt orange, oops, burnt oranges first, baked earth and the last one will be willow. And sometimes you have to play with these if you forget the colours. And again what I should have done is use my little book of watercolours because especially with the ink tents, the Derwent pencils, you can look at the end and know exactly what you're getting. Uh, but the ink tents, because they are so intense, um, the, the colours, you wouldn't think that you could get this lovely pale colour mm -hmm. from that really vivid end pencil. This is three layers of pencil. So again, I use this little book, I just zoom out a bit, even though I don't actually need the colours. I have coloured many times from this book. And that will give you some really nice control. You can get 10 shades from every pencil. I'm only getting one. Oops, we're going to have a, a visitor, which is the little pussycat. Are you going to be okay down there? And you're going to disturb the dog? Yes, he's asleep down there. So why don't you go through that good girl? No, you mowed. Sorry, there could be a bark alert. She has to mow. She couldn't just get up and walk out. She has to say, excuse me, dog, I'm, you know, I'm here. So I flick through. So again, if I have a look at my colours, I can think, well, I like that one, which is the burnt orange and the tan. Um, or I can look and see what colours go together. So I pick, you see, saddle's quite nice. 
Saddle is quite nice. Uh, sorry, amber is quite nice, and saddle brown. They're really nice. Um, on the other side, we have the reds. And I've probably tried to keep these in order, I think, how they are. There's all the greens. Um, there's a few mustard colours, and uh, these are lovely for, for wheat. Um, I use these a lot for um, fields, far away fields, because they look like wheat and barley. And, and then there's some lovely blues, and then there's the deeper blues and the dark. So this one I have at the moment, which is willow. Um, that's not burnt orange, that's cadmium orange. But I like the willow one, but here we've got a burnt orange, which I do have, and the tangerine and the cadmium orange, and they look quite nice together. They look quite nice together. The kind of orangey warmer, which would be kind of a, a, a basket. Although a basket is made out of willow, so again, there's the willow which is here, which is, is still quite warm. Um, that's quite warm. So it's quite good to look because I know I can get willow darkest and willow lightest, and I can use this as a colour guide rather than using them as a watercolour palette. But these small areas lend themselves to some to this kind of work. So when I work in this book, I will just get a damp brush, touch the colour, and and again I don't take the pencils, I just take the little book. Um, and then when I'm sit sitting, I'm just flicking this particular thing, and I've got all the pencils that I need. The only difference is if you have a large area, like the tree. You know you're going to take off all this color so i tend to do just small areas with this so this book is perfect i used it when i did this this page uh, this is all derwent oops, derwent watercolor pencils but it's all it's all of them used from my little book because they're all pale and they're all small areas and again completely flat because you're using just a little damp brush so any detailed colour book you can just use a um, beautiful easy little book like this you flick you see the colour you touch the colour and you use it it's very instant this book and there's something quite nice about that uh, but as I say I use it for this particular oh hi dear Monty welcome to Bunny's Designs just having a waffle about my little book of watercolours. I say I'm quite amazed that um, I think Derwent can possibly get a thousand colours in here. And this is an A6 size. Now mine is a bit, a bit chunky, but I've got... Um, if I could cut the art bars, I would put the art bars in here. The Derwent art bars, because they are, I think they're professional watercolours. And so I could have... 100 instant pure color here for really deep things and then i could have um and you could probably get a thousand colors just out of that but i'm sure that they can produce a, a short shallow triangle of pure color to fit a couple of millimeters into a book and that would be good for posting all over the planet so on a little postcard watercolor postcard you could buy the colors to stick on and they can do it a lot neater than me. The yellow one disintegrated, but <laughs> again, I've got the three pale colours that I used. And I got 660 colours out of Silelium Blue, Elysium Crimson and Lemon lemon Yellow, the cold yellow. And you make the cold yellow into a cadmium yellow by making an orange. So you make the yellow and the red to make the, the very bright pinky red to make an orange and then you put a touch of orange into your cadmium yellow and it becomes sorry into your lemon yellow and it becomes a cadmium yellow. The only difficulty I had was making a beautiful French ultramarine. Um, it was a deepish purple. I could never get a proper purple, but it worked. But you can get the vivid greens. 
and then you can add the darker green so I did manage to get the full color spectrum with just three colors and I got the idea from the print ink having the three cyan I think one's called cyan and then you have the pinky red and then you have the bright yellow and I thought if the printer can do it I can do it so again with the the uh, Derwent art bars I thought they'd be awesome in this little book Um, and again, you could buy the, uh, whoopsie, or they could use the art bars. I'm going to put them in here instead of my Karen Dash because I don't have the full set of Karen Dash near color twos. But the art bars are really creamy and creamy, so they will go on here. But I love them as a scale like these, but I actually want them as a proper pure colour to use a watercolour on here so you could have your traditional watercolours on here and if you had I think I've got two four six eight ten twelve uh, you could possibly get 36 you could possibly get 36 triangles of colour here on one side and 36 on the other so that's your 72 I don't know how many is in the art bars I think it's a hundred but most of Derwent's are in 72s so you could have little triangles and they could be named obviously a lot neater with the little Derwent logo um, that could go in the front of your book um, I'm probably going to make another one of these I'd say this one was made from I just cut, made it out of an old photo book um, but I just envisage having the Derwent little logo here and like a ring binder or some kind of small binder so that you can buy whatever colors you want um, but you can buy the 72 Derwent pencil in this form and then if you like them you can use this as a travel so you can go out and we said I think there was um, the 72 ink tents and 72 Derwent and there's the graphite tint and then there's the drawing pencils as well, which you again you get ten shades out of each one. So you've got a few hundred in just this little pack here on these pages. You get twelve. Now if you've doubled that, you get more colour. So I would probably say to them, you know, have six reds, six yellows and six blues. So I've got them on 12 pages, but I think six is a good good amount. It'll last you about a year. Mine lasted quite a long time. So if you get six months out of using these in your colour books, if you've got the full set and they were a little bit bigger, and they can obviously put the colour on a bit better than I can, I just scribble it on. But I think that's going to be the 21st century colour book with a thousand Derwent colours. Um, so, no, they get more than a thousand. They would have a thousand colours, and for each colour, you get ten shades. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> oh, hi, Teresa. It's very cold, is it? Oh, I've got the heating on. We never get too cold here. When you you, you have really, really warm summers and really, really cold winters. <laughs> Yeah, it's not too bad. It's a bit murky out there, but I don't tend to. I don't want to stick my nose out of the door today. So <laughs> I'm just waffling about my little Derwent book with all sorts. I mean, I do have other other ones in here, um, but I do have the Ink Tense blocks. And again, these are the Kurtaki Ganzai Tambi watercolors, but they can be fat puddles of art bars. So you could have the art bars as a puddle of colour and you, and your grade scale and you can have them as a little triangle. Um, I don't know whether to put them in the microwave. I've tried to warm them up um, to cut them because this is just a pan but they're a little bit crumbly and I haven't been brave enough to really wreck them because I'm a bit of a tight Yorkshire lass. Um, but it is a way to warm them up. You could then cut the triangle and obviously Derwent can actually just make little triangles of all the colors stick them on a stick them on a board and then you can post it postage would be good 
The worst thing about buying things from England and Australia is the damn postage. But these will, this is probably the heaviest one, but these are going to be so light to post. Um, and you can either replace the ones you've used, or if you really love them, you can then buy the pencils. And I don't think they'll be that expensive to produce, because I think everybody would love this little travel book. But it's also a sampler as well. So, you know, if these are £5, £10 a set, you've got 72 colours for, for £10. But you could get the £10 if you bought the full set of Ink Tens pencils, which are £110 or whatever they are, £80. Uh, something like that. Um, the graphite tint, they've only got a few colours, but again, I would say to them, bring out just a few more reds and a few more yellows. Um, because there's, I think there's four greens, but there's only a red. So I would have liked a little bit more of a red so that I could have put, um, when I did this one, I just could have done with a little bit of a yellow and a little bit more of a, 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 a red, just to give that out the cherries a little bit of a bounce. I keep calling them the cherries, the holly berries. So we could just do with a couple of yellows and a couple of reds because there's a purple and there's a there's a wine colour just so that you've got like a full range just in that set um, but again Derwent could bring out 72 graphy tones if they really wanted to um, they have all the colour technology so at the back we've got pastel which is just smudged with a little blender tool and then I thought the foreground is going to really pop because it's got the ink tents so again that's going to make it a little bit more realistic there's kind of a bullard colored wallpaper Victorian wallpaper but then we've got Victorian floorboards in the foreground and we've got the Victorian fireplace and it's it's giving it more of a homey touch <laughs> Oh no, Teresa. Well, I say, oh no, that's wonderful. <laughs> if it's very, very cold and very, very dry and crisp, I, I'm not normally as in much pain with my arthritis as I am when it's... Uh, I'm just going to put that like that because that's how the light should be. So I'll move my little book. So I was just using it. Again, you can use it as a colour swatch because sometimes you can't really tell all these beautiful browns because the ink tense pencils um, that you can't really tell what's at the end of most of them you can some of them um, and again the scale says that if I use a lot of this color I'm going to get that color and if I just use a little light scraping and then and then blend I'm going to get that color so I can get 10 shades out of every pencil and I know the pencils are wonderful to use like this but they are so versatile because you've got so much control than you have just with the pencil because you've got it in a little book. So I can use a little bit of a damp brush and a bit of colour or I can use a damp brush and a lot of colour and that completely changes the colour. So you can look on here and think, well, actually, I like that colour and I don't like that, but I like that colour. So, you know, roughly, and this is why I always say make a, a colour scale. Um, so I'm going back to this little basket down here after my little rant. I found I found the colours for I found the colours. I worked out the colours that I wanted, and then I thought, well, that's silly because I might as well just look in my little book. So I've got some logs to do and a basket. So again, I was looking at these kind of. Um, this is kind of the amber colour and the sable, saddle brown. But I want to know where the willow is because the willow is kind of... The oak is very dark cold. The chocolate's a bit of a cold brown as well. Mustard's a bit warmer. Um, I don't really want a greeny one because there's a lot of green. The tree's going to be green. There's a lot of green in the holly and the berries and things. 
and I'm just looking for see the, the sepia ink goes to this colour and this is what I quite liked as my shadow for the logs um, I was just looking for the willow which has got to be somewhere I was looking at the oak I've not got willow I think willow's over here yeah willow's there so willow is quite warm and that would be quite nice for the basket so I'm going to have willow and I think I'm going to have um, and I think I did pick out actually I did pick a burnt orange and willow so actually I would have come to the same conclusion whether I played about with the colour and wa watered it down or whether I looked at my little book so I have that colour swatch. So you have snowstorms in America. And we often don't get snowstorms, but I say when it's very, very cold and crisp, it's not so bad for me. So um, I like those colours. But if you want to mess about with colour, and just put a little bit of a pencil down and then water it down. You can find your colours and then you can say, well, you know, those two colours don't really go. So this one actually worked better with this as a shadow. So I chose my three colours uh, and I've forgotten what they were now. I think they're burnt earth and burnt orange and I think it was willow. And then for the logs, I was looking at uh, sepia ink and oak because they're a little bit cooler so we'll do the basket first and I try to put them in order so when I put them on the table I have the dark and I normally try it in threes you don't want more than three because you want a bit of a connection I think so I have three so I have a light a medium and a dark and now when I'm working out of my little book and for these leaves they're just going to have one colour so I'm going to touch the colour in the centre and I'm going to move it out and it'll look like a watercolour but I've done it with a damp brush so it doesn't damage your page and I've just used one colour and then if I want to go really dark for a, a very dark shadow say down here I'll just touch the end of the paint the actual pencil and that's going to give me the really really concentrated darkest colour and so I will then have the three colours. I'll have a pale, I'll have a bland colour that's flat colour, and then I'll have a concentrated colour which is going to be very dark. And that will give me my three colours. So I'll have the colour of the actual leaf, I'll have the highlight where the lights hit it, and I'll have a shadow where it's dark. And that's all you need. You only need three. In a normal, in a normal colour book, I mean, if you were doing something that, like a skin tone, you put red and you put green, and you can put hundreds of colours underneath. But if you were just doing a colour book, I think three is enough. Um, so I start with the palest. So again, you've got to think of light. So I haven't thought of light here. There's the candles. There's the fire. So actually, if you wanted to have it kind of really dark and getting lighter here, is it like the ambro? Not ambro. Um, it's called the Rembrandt effect and he used it for his portrait so that there would be light on one side of the face and the background would be all dark but the light would just be hitting well this is the perfect thing to do if you wanted to do that so you could have very dark on this side and then very very warm light because it's a warm flame so everything on this side will be warm and it will be a warmer glow than on the other side if that makes any sense and again the leaves but on the leaves at this side, because we have a Christmas tree here, there would be, and candles, there's going to be a little bit of light here. And then under here, there's going to be some more light because there's another candle. So actually, this is quite a good little book to, to show you that, you know, there is going to be a little bit of a light hitting there, darker than up here. Whereas if that wasn't there, then the light would be hitting, it would be quite pale here and some shadow. But down, it would get darker again as you get into corners. But because that little candle's there, it's going to light things up. And you could even get a reflection if you wanted. So 
Welcome to Bunny's Designs. I'm sorry you're all waking up to a bit of a freeze. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to do the basket first. Unless anybody else has got any more questions. I think. just about the right color so if i just just very carefully now it may just change the light we'll have to see so hopefully that's quite handy and i always have my extra bit of kitchen um of paper just to just double check sometimes if you're not sure so the top and this side is just going to have a little and I can't press down hard so it's just going to be every end of there it's going to have and I've made a mistake because that is the actual logs um, now the beauty of the pastel pencils they rub off completely before you smudge them even if you smudge them they still come off and the ink tents are actually not so bad as well that was a big faux pas i just made <laughs> you can tell i've only had an hour's sleep but my daughter woke me up with a pot of tea so i had to wake myself <laughs> oh bless so i'm doing the basket so I've got the palest colour first. Um, it, I don't know if it is a basket, but I'm actually going to do it as a basket. So we want pale there. I probably might just do... I'm going to do two colours and then I'm going to use the last one after I've activated the two colours that way I can the way different way you hold a pencil is what you get differently um, and again on that side so the pales coming from that side really now if there's a light coming from here as well you'd have the darkest bit would be in the middle which is unusual but I just put a little bit of light on there And I'm going to leave the middle because I'll show you why in a bit. So that's got its first colour on. So that pencil possibly could go away because I'm not going to use it again, I don't think. Leave it there. And then I want the next one. So that's going to be on the other side. Now I don't have a point on these. I don't like wasting the, pe the pencil. Um, and again, I could not believe that I've made, um, I mm. knew you could use pastels, but I didn't know you could use pencil pastel. But the shavings I got, um, the scrapings I got from the sharpening with a blade, I actually made into a watercolour. So I've got the 72, well I would have if they had the full set, uh, 72 pastel watercolours now from Derwent and again you know they they would quite easily be able to produce because they have the colors and instead of putting it into a pencil form they can put it in a they can put it on a page so I'm going to activate I think I'm going to activate that in fact I think I'm just going to do I'm just going to do the logs and then I will, so I'm going to do these first. So we've got that colour and that colour. This is the palest. So I'm going to put that on the top. And 
and if I make a boo-boo I can put I can put quite a lot um, and this I've just realized the grate wants to be colored in as well um, I think that's probably a log behind it isn't it yep yep that's a log behind it and of course that's going to be quite dark now It's underneath. And I really am being very rough with this because I can't grip the pencils very well. And you don't need to. You can just... And then you can just get a rough idea of what's going on. And I'm sorry, I just have to hold the pencil like this. you can mix the colors before you add the water so you can get hundreds of other colors in between you don't always have to have the colors in the pencil again you know they can thousands of colors out of one um, I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do with that so I'll just do a little bit of that there so we know that they're going to be that color Um, and I think I'm just going to put this line in here because I don't like that. There seems to be a line missing on here because that looked like it was a, a log but there was no line so I'm going to put that there. And this one is an ended but it's the wrong end so it wants to be kind of, still needs something here. Um, I wonder if I could put it there. As a short log. Because it doesn't make any sense that one. So I've put it sticking out the back. So if I just give that a minute or two to kind of. Uh, I think that's the palest one, isn't it? Yeah. So if I give that just a minute or two to kind of. And again, we said we wanted all that pale, that side. And on top. And again, you know, it's the colour book's been done for you. Most of the shading's been done. I'm just going to just give that that little bit down there. And I really am just scribbling um, because you, as long as you stay within the line and you don't go over it because you can maneuver it to the line. So always go in the line and then use your paintbrush to maneuver it. So you can scribble because you're not going to the line. And then by the time you've scribbled that round with the paintbrush, you've kind of got... You've got your uh, your centre. So I think what I'm going to do actually is start at the top and do this particular wreath on the top there so I'm going to start with at this side because again I've got to I can shut that up now a folded piece of copy paper is quite good I'm going to use the number three rigger so let's just have a look and see what's going on frame so what I'm going to do is just activate that little bit 
Oh, the colors just disappeared. Just going to move that up there. Apologies, it's just my light changes. My light changes. Um, so we want a damp brush. Activate this ink tense, I think. This is cherry red, I think. It might have been chilly, this one. I didn't want it too bright because we've got the holly berries. Um, so, once you've got a pail here and stroke back down, you can have your... and use the same colour. Tease that and use that pail to be here and activate the darkest bit in the middle and that's going to give you a nice highlight not too much but just enough and tease that one out and then that's this one I'm going to do all the flowers first the poinsettias and tease the colour when I want it Broke hair on the end of that. We can tease that across. Apologies if you can hear the fan going on my laptop. I don't know why. <laughs> and this is a really nice, peaceful way of working. Um, and all the pressure is on this little bendy rigger. And your brush it's almost instantly dry and your paper's flat and if you're going to spill your water you've got a tablespoon of water so again that's lovely so um, there's the ivy leaves which are a different colour but you can't tell too much until you start to tease that colour in. So if you activate the outside and then tease that colour in, you get a beautiful highlight and a shadow. So you want pale on the outside. And I made a mistake with this leaf. I thought it was... I thought it was um, a petal, so I coloured it red and then I rubbed it out so there's the tiniest bit of red there but I can get rid of that and then that leaf would be quite dark because it's behind and this is where it comes alive my lighting would behave itself oops just give me two seconds I think that might be a little bit better that lighting just the palest of colour but it's given me a highlight and it was easy to do I just scribbled a, a circle now if you want a darker middle um, I'm pretty sure I used and I love this Derwent um, pencil pouch but I'm zoomed in now I think I used um, I used chili red I think but you can always check yeah I used chili red um, no I don't think I did if I, if I wet that no it's too pink that's why I'm just playing about to try and find this pink now, this red. I think that's so. There's a poppy red, it must be poppy red then. Did I use poppy red? No, I used poppy red for the for the bows. I used the chili red for um, the holly berries, and I used scarlet pink. I think I used scarlet pink. 
just double check. Oh. No, I think I used. Did I use the cherry? No, I think I used that one. I definitely used. I definitely used the scarlet pink. So what I can do in the middle, although it's normally sometimes a little bit darker in the middle, but I can get. And I would suggest you do this off your book, but I'm showing you what to do because if you do this, you'll splatter your book. Um, if you very carefully just tease that and if you just touch the middle it'll pop because it's pure colour and that's how much control you have when you use a damp brush and again there is actually enough to do the third one but to me that's not popping enough so again a damp brush and you can put on as much as little as you want And if you're not happy with those little flowers, you can use the 10 zero the 10 zero graduate De Laurenti liner, which is very fine. And you can stroke pure color on here. And you can just put a bit of a shadow I'll pink them up a little bit. If you just didn't like that circular bit that you put on, looks a bit too regimented. If you just wanted a different a bit more contrast. Just to change them a bit. And put a shadow. And you can mess about and do as much detail as you want. Or you can just colour them with the pencil. Activate the ink tens so they pop and then leave them. And that's just given a little bit more to each one. So it's not quite in a circle like I did it because it was a bit kind of very roughly scribbled was that so again you can just put make that shadow go there in fact you can actually as long as you paintbrush as long as it's dry you can put a little bit more in that's probably going to be quicker look um, if this was wet it would be too vibrant never wet the end of your pencil you ruin your pencil and you don't need to if you need some vibrant color just touch it with a paintbrush or just draw another line of colour in and then I can go back in with the, with the number three the bigger brush and again when I have the pencils in order I have the three paintbrushes in order as well just because it's easier um, so we can put a little bit more colour in there so they're a little bit brighter than the background this colour goes a long, long way, which is why they work very well on a paper pencil paper palette. Because they are ink tense, they are very vibrant. So again, we're just going to um, make these pop out a little bit. I hope the light's okay. Sometimes the light is absolutely brilliant and sometimes it's absolutely perfect. <laughs> and you don't really know but I think I'm going to um, I don't think I can sell this table I think I'm just going to have to give it away I think so that one was 0320 scarlet scarlet pink and it was um, a ready red so it, it's really nice for poinsettias so I can just tease that colour and the brush is only damp and because it's dried you have to wait till it dries it's given just a bit of a tinty highlight to that I mean, it won't mean much until we've done all these until we've done all these other ones as well 
I mean, you can do them flat colours. You don't have to do them the pale colours. It's an ink tense and it's a Christmas book. You can do them whatever colour you want. But it's a very easy, very quick, and I like quiet ways of working. I like just to sit and stroke colour around with a bendy brush. That's my idea of of chilling out. So I'm doing all these um, poinsettia leaves first. I think there's three on each one. Just purely because I get confused. <laughs> it doesn't take much. So I do those all first. And there is a little bit of this colour on the brush, but not much. So again, if you, know, if you have got a very pale one there, you can stroke some colour. So we've done all those points. You see there's more there. There's one here. I keep missing them, look. So it's always a good idea to do all those first. And there's one here. Miss that one. And then just join them together is a little holly leaf. So I'm just going to rinse the brush out and the brush has been rinsed out and that water is as clear as anything. The bottom of the tin isn't very clear. <laughs> so I've now got a clean damp brush and if you think there's too much water you know it's a bit of a puddle you just kind of nip not the end you can just nip the long rigger and that takes out the water but doesn't touch the colour on the end. So you're not interfering with that. All you're doing is drying the brush so you've got a bit more control. And you don't get too much stamp on your page. Especially if it's a Bible page, you know, you really, really thin. Bible pages are very thin. Uh, but of course the ink tents are gorgeous on the Bible page because they're very vibrant. And you don't need a lot of water. And you don't need to gesso anything, you just draw with a pencil, scratch a little bit of colour in and you're away. But of course these Joanna, Joanna's books are very, very good quality paper. So they will take that little bit more. Um, I haven't actually got much of a highlight on this like I normally do. Not really bothered, I want this to be nice and vibrant. Nice intense colours so I'm not thinking too much about watercolours like I was with the with the the Derwent watercolour pencils in the Colin Thompson ones with all the books I needed a lot of highlights and low lights but this is just a bit of a Christmassy kind of book so it doesn't lend itself to so much detail like the others. Been round all the leaves. Oh, I've missed a little one down there. Look, and you can, and it's fairly quick. Again, I'd like it to be fairly quick. I can't do with it being so, so, um, so much that you you kind of get bogged down with it. So I'm going to start on the palest bit first, and tease a little bit in from the end and then go in the middle and then I'm going to do this middle bit here go in here draw that up very carefully and there's going to be far too much colour to go in the middle so I'm just going to go on the outside there and then stroke across because if you do it too much you lose your bow highlight and if you do it too less you don't get your highlight at all. It looks silly. But this way, now there is a lot of red on there, but I'm just going to tease that down because it's quite a long way. And hopefully, I will get a really, really subtle highlight. And this one. And again, just a damp brush. And just tease that colour down. So you get a really natural highlight. And that was doing nothing except for scratching um, two, two pieces in the middle, a line of red at either end and a little bit underneath and then fill the bottom bow up 
in the darkest area completely and then just teasing it out with a damp brush and yet I've got a lovely watercolour effect there so again dead easy and when I pan out that's going to sit in fact I'll do that now because I've never seen this I've never done this before I've never done this before I just thought it might be it might work so if I pan out now that's gone into the background and that's kind of bright so all of this is going to pop because it's all um, ink tense and the pastels are going to fade away hopefully <laughs> as I say I have never done this before um, I just had the idea that this would lend itself to an old Victorian kind of uh, floral um, what's his name William William Boris wallpaper kind of effect uh, so I've got I've got some candles here so they've just had the tiniest amount of the yellow and I've used that around the flame for the fire as well and again they are going to pop now because this is ink tense so they are going to really really pop out and we can do this little one I can do this off camera I'm just activating the candle I'm not giving it a highlight I'm just activating that little bit of scratched color I put into each candle and I don't know what colors to do them so I've left them oopsie and just see if I can move everything up slightly I'm not sure what colors to do the candles so I've left them I can do the red bow if I move over here oopsie I can do the red bow and just put my hand on the on the paper so again I'm going to do the middle and you'll see that uh, really pop so if we go and do the middles first and that's going to give us quite a lot of color on the end of this brush now so we can kind of kind of drag that out like that and that's given us a nice highlight I dry the brush off a little bit and just gather a little bit more color and then you kind of very much the opposite of the um, the chameleon pens but exactly the same way you're going from dark to light the chameleon pens are going light to dark and that's exactly the same way so we're just going to take that bit of red and tease that to the very end you don't have to do this you can just color it in in complete red and then activate oops activate the red if you wanted to oops I keep going over a little bit because again I'm not at a comfortable position so that one's got a bit darker than this one but if you're not happy with that you can um, you can tease the color out if you quit And then we can just tease these kind of ivy leaves. And because you've done that little bit of scribble, you've almost got the middle of that ivy leaf. And just tease the colour. If you want a nice highlight on the end just leave it if you're not happy with it tease it all out I'm not particularly bothered with that I might do a smaller brush actually I think possibly um, if you can use the biggest one that's that's the best so I'm gonna go probably with a number one brush because these are a little bit small and then just 
tease that colour out. And even though it's a colour book and it's a Christmas colour book, it doesn't really bother me. It's a colour book. I want to work in it. I've just seen the reflection through the magnifying glass. <laughs> and again, that's going to really pop out. So I think we might have a... I haven't quite decided about the, the fireplace yet. Um, one thing I did do, though, is the little bows in the top of each stocking. So... Um, I'm going to use the little tiny 10 zero liner for this one because it's going to be enough. So again, you do the middle one and we just tease out that colour. And then... And the one thing I think I've forgotten to do, and again, I want to have a nice little highlight coming down here. So I'm just going to put my wrist at a nice angle because that's going to make it easier. But I have forgotten to put a little bit of red under the bow. So I'm pretty sure that it's this colour here. No, it's not that one. I thought it was poppy red. I, just have a, I think poppy red we said was for the, that's for the bows. Let me have a look. So I've got, you can scratch a little bit of colour in and you don't need to make a book like mine, you can just take the colour from here. Um, if you want it darker, you just tease a little bit of there and just fill that in. And that's going to make that highlight pop out better. So we'll go to the other little bow at the other side. And sorry about the light, I've just got my hand in the way. You need a nice steady action to so it doesn't dry. With the Derwent pencils, the watercolour pencils, it doesn't matter if it dries, you can reactivate it. The ink tens you can't. Um, once they're dried, they're dried. You can add to them, but you can't take it away. But the that's why I love the watercolor pencils because you can go back in there, um, and like any any watercolor, you can just manipulate it again by dampening it and wetting it. But you can't with the ink tens because once they're set. And once they're dried, they're set. So again, if you're not happy with it, you can just put the tiniest bit more colour in there. Now, what you could do if you really... I'm going to actually do all that because that's going to be it going into a little bit of a shadow in there. So I can put the cherry red pencil, oops, pencil away. And I'm just going to finish whoops, the leaves and then I'll, I'll pan out and we can have a look how far we've got. So I'm just going to push very carefully to this whoops, side there. Um, I'm actually going to use the number three brush and I shall do the, whoops, the holly ones first. I just need to put it's always a good idea, no matter what, what you're doing, is always put a piece of paper. Whoops, a piece of photocopy paper. So I've got two different colours here. I'm not sure if it'll work, but I'll go. Oh, actually, sorry, I haven't got two pieces of colour. I, I don't think I have. I think I used just one. Um, 
and I haven't got a highlight on there, but I'm not particularly bothered. And again, this is a bit of a bigger brush, this, but it's quicker. So you can be as creative or as quick as you want to be. I like colour books that are interesting and different, but I don't want to spend hours and hours on a page. Sometimes I do, and I have a couple of books for that, but most of them I like to sit and see a little bit of progress because it's sometimes like a jigsaw puzzle. I have a friend, she won't do any more than a thousand, uh, than 500 pieces. And I've bought it for years, these beautiful thousand piece jigsaws, thinking I would get her something that she'd love. And she's never done them because, of course, I didn't realise. She doesn't, she wants to kind of do the jigsaw, but not spend three weeks on it. She wants to spend a few days on it. Um, and I think sometimes you like that with your colour book. There's colour books that I know the page, each page is going to take hours. Um, and again, I like this way of working. You know, I could not do this page in pencils because my fingers wouldn't allow me to do that. So this is fairly quick. Um, and I've missed a leaf there, look. So I, um, I think it was an olive. I think it was an olive colour. Let me have a look. You can activate that colour, and I don't think it's the right one. So this one is, um, oh, this is oak. No, it was definitely a. It was definitely an olive colour, I think. Yeah. So I think there's two kind of olive colours in here. That I think the. Um, the beach green was that one, um, and I think the olive colours are on the other page. There's a light olive, let's have a look at that one. I don't think it's that one, but it might be. Mm, don't think so. I think it's the other the other olive. So let's have a quick look for the other olive one. Mm, no, it must be that one. Yes, that's it. I thought it was. I, I normally use the light olive for the ivy because I like it. I like its colours. Move this very carefully there. And again, just push out this colour. So if you do it twice, you get the flatter colour. If you do it once, it leaves you the centre different. So it depends. I think in Joanna's uh, jungle, magical jungle there are some different leaves with different centers so you could do this all in one without uh, having to do three or four pencils and this is just a very light scratch of color off the pencil this I haven't dug deep down onto the pencil this olive color looks like this um, but that hurts my hands. That's one coat, one coat, and that's the other coat. And then that is the coating that's on the paper palettes in my little book. And when you activate this, you're going to get some really deep, vivid olive colours. My light is a little bit off. But 
that you can tell there's a difference. So, sorry about all the movement. So I start to mix the Christmas stocking and work my way down. Oh, hi, Suzanne. Welcome to Bunny's Designs. Uh, this is a live stream with live peoples, although it is quite early in the UK, so it'll be extremely early all over the planet. Um, I'm still working in my Joanna's Christmas. Um, I had a request to carry on because I would think people have actually asked for this particular there's a couple that I've missed down there as well. Um, particular book. So if you've got it for Christmas, you're only just going to be starting. And you certainly don't want to wait until next Christmas. Or I don't want to wait till next Christmas. So I've decided to finish this book. Um, I'm going to finish this book because I may not be using any other. I probably won't be doing any more colour books. And I certainly can't afford to buy any more. Buy anymore. I've had the riot attack read at me. <laughs> so, um, and I don't work, so I won't be having any more colour books um, and I won't be having any more colour supplies, even though I wanted the pencils. I wanted the Derwent um, pastel pencils, but you can't have everything. So, I won't probably be doing any more colour books after these, but I, I have probably enough for the next 25 years, so I'm sure I'll be fine. There's the Colin Thompson book. I think the only books I'll buy again, uh, but it's going to have to be for September, for birthdays on Mother's Day maybe, is the... Um, I love the Joanna books, so I probably would like to go through those. I like the... I love the Bennett Klein ones, but they're not on water paper, so or thicker paper. And and I think my my pastel pencil days are uh, numbered, shall we say? So it's going to be the Derwent ink tents, the Derwent watercolor pencils, and the Graphitone because they're all water based. And all the other pencils I'm giving to my girls for college and for other things because I can't use them anymore. So we are... Oh, it's 10.18 at the moment. Oh, time flies when you're having, having fun, doesn't it? Um, what did I see I used? I used light olive and I've changed the colour around there. So we've got light olive which can be dark olive if you want it to be. Um, I'm not going to do this on cam move the camera because I've got the two leaves to do. I'm just I've just realized that behind the Christmas stocking I'd forgotten a couple of ivy leaves. So I've just kind of scribbled the tiniest amount of pencil. Actually I should have done that on camera. So all I did, I'd missed those two leaves here. So I just kind of just scribbled a little bit like that, just like that, nothing else. And that's going to give me all this colour to manoeuvre around. And literally that's it, a little scratch of colour. They are so vibrant. Um, I just do the flames again. I've got I've got a bigger brush. Um, I'm going to the largest brush, the number three. So, and again, I've no idea what colours to do, so if I don't know, I've left it. A bit of a chicken that way. So I'm going to do the yellow first, and that brush is too wet. So if you can see, nipped it once, and I've flattened it, turn it, and nip it again. And you haven't interfered with the tip. I've still got the nice point on the end that I twisted on the baby wipe. But the paintbrush isn't saturated now, so it's going to give a nice, even, just damp brush to stroke over that colour and make it completely pop out. 
and do the palies first. And then when you when you see the the, the color not blending instantly, you know that you need to tiny you need to clean the brush again and re reactivate the brush. And I'll show you what I do with that. So there is going to be the tiniest bit of yellow on there, but it doesn't matter. So what I am doing is I am dunking into this little flat pot and twisting on a baby wipe. And that's giving me a damp brush and if it's too wet that's just about right because eventually baby wipe gets saturated so you have to clean it you have to rinse it out uh, squeeze it out because it gets full of water because it's absorbing the excess water off your paintbrush and that in, that ensures that you can actually do this coloring in um, on a Bible page which is very very thin. I don't actually use ink tents on a Bible page but I use the Derwent watercolours uh, and again I've bought the my my creative Bible to colour in so that's another I missed that one there and um, so that's another one that's on the list to, to do. And you can do that if you just have a damp, a damp brush. So all your pages are nice and flat. And again, you can do this in the car. And if you spill a tablespoon of water, it's not the end of the world. You never need to wash your brush out because there's only the tiniest amount on there. And by the time you've pushed it around, I just dunk straight back into there and there's no hardly any colour at all. So again it's a tight Yorkshire lass, you're not wasting any. Oops, everybody's puddling around, I don't know why. So um, I'm just going to do the little carrot and I did put the palest colour of the yellow on top followed by, oh sorry, orange. So it might go a bit red actually because I don't know why I put red on the carrot, <laughs> um, but we have quite a nice highlight to low light, so there we go. So moving across to the other poinsettias, um, again just going in there, and I haven't done the leaves for this, so I can show you exactly what I do with the leaves. And again, if you want to get rid of that circle, because that's all I did is I just scribbled around in a circle like that with the pencil, because um, I just didn't want any stress on my fingers, so on thumbs. But that's fine because although that colour's just there, I can manipulate that round now. So you would never think that I just scribbled a horrible circle in the middle. This brush is just damp. If it was too wet, it would just run around. And so now I need a leaf green, um, and I actually think I used leaf green. I've just double check, just to show I did. Let me have a look at leaf green. It does look a bit. Mm, leaf green actually looks like olive. Mm, I think I used that one. So again, I can just, this is all I did, a very, very, just literally scrub, not pushing down at all, just, this is about as much as my thumb wants to do. 
um, do not definitely do not want to do any more than this. Now you can fill that one completely because it's behind. Um, so you can start to think that little bit more creative if you want to. Um, and there's kind of a gap in the in the middle there, so I'm actually going to fill that in as well. And that's all there is to all that colour. So you can start with the palest one. It's very similar to the background actually, which is olive in the um, pencil pastel, I think. I think it's the light olive. So if I do this one, um, and then just very carefully just a bit of a and this obviously is quite dark under here tease that across so if you're clever enough to put the pencil where the shadow would be you don't need to do any more work that's it everything else is done for you. You can just tease that down there and that one. And we're probably going to get them all done just with one damp brush. And it's finished. That's just that little bit pale there, but I quite like that bit of a highlight. Uh, terracotta pot, I think. So we do have a terracotta. Um, but because I've used the red fairly pale, um, if we have a look now, we can start thinking about the whole picture now. And you can see that the poinsettias up here are a lot brighter than here. But these do kind of sit forward, so it might work. I can actually take a lot of this off if I want. It's not set, it's still, it's still pastel. So I can actually rub out some of that. So that's why I've left it until the end. There's the holly to do on this side. Again, just a damp brush, and these color, colors just pop out. So, have anybody got any questions? Oh, sorry, Suzanne, I've just seen you. <laughs> I'm in the Joanna Basford's Christmas color book. I've decided I wanted to finish it because I didn't really want to put it away till next year. Um, and I had a request on YouTube for. Uh, a video to carry on so I thought well actually that's a good idea and I apologize if I offend anybody uh, coloring a Christmas book after Christmas <laughs> but um, I think people would have asked for this for Christmas as a Christmas present in which case they're just starting it so um, it's gonna have to be and I really do not want to put this away until next year because obviously next year there's going to be other colour books um, and the other thing is the way my hands are going at the moment I may not be doing this for much longer so I want to get them all finished um, so that's that's where we are at the moment uh, so again I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with the fire grate But you can manipulate. They're so kind of even. It's a pa a pa pl a pes a pencil. You can still manipulate that color like it's butter. It just blends beautifully, and I love using these as a watercolor. And there's no mixing. You know, you can you can scribble five colors together. The Derwent watercolours, you can do the same. I just really love them. They're very easy. Uh, so you get wonderful effects. Um, 
and don't think they're for children because you know there's a lot of artists out there that use them I was in, I've got a video from David Cook from the 80s 70s, uh, 80s 90s um, and he was a wildlife artist or he is a wildlife artist and he used them he was the one that scribbled the squares on the back of his book his sketchbook so he left the pencils at home and took the colour out to, to sketch with and that's what gave me the idea for the book again I quite like these colours I've just scribbled some colouring very roughly and yet they're coming out no Suzanne I don't use anything at the moment um, I don't use anything um, I've got about three or four different things going on at once um, and I can't use a lot of things I'm not I've, because I've got a dodgy kidney I'm not allowed to use anything um, where's the fireplace gone come back come back come back again I didn't think those logs would turn out quite as good but just scribbling those two colors has made a big difference So my my colouring only videos always tend out to be about arthritis or something. Um, but there are other art artists out there that can do lovely things that I can't do so anymore. Um, so, you know, if people want to talk about disability and, and poorly hands and, and, and then that's what it's about. So oh, the light kind of really disappeared then. Um, let me see if I can get that light back. Um, they didn't say anything. Uh, they said um, it sounded interesting. Um, and they've not heard anything else. I presume that's it. So... Never mind. Uh, I can't believe that these colours actually worked. I was so... She, she said, oh, it sounded... And I thought, oh, and I've actually got around to the right person, but no. So never mind. So that was... a. It was all excitement for nothing. <laughs> but you never know. You never know. They might suddenly decide that they need that. But I just thought it was a good marketing thing um, but I won't be going up there for another year if in fact we are doing that show because I don't think we're doing that show anymore and we knew it was the last year which is why I was going to try and get up but I was just too ill to travel so I used to love going my model shows because hubby did the shows and I used to go shopping but of course I can't get out now, so I don't really see the point of going to model railway shows to sit behind the stall for two days, solid, being bored to death. <laughs> Although I could take my colour books with me. I can't believe these two colours really work well. They look really good. Um, but of course, that's, that's the beauty of these Derwent pencils they are coming out quite nicely and I only used two colours I didn't use three because what I was going to do is actually put the shadow which I'm going to do in a minute um, but again even the ones in the fireplace they look really quite good but I was going to take the liner and I think it was the sepia I think it was the other one the darker one wasn't it it was the oak and I just thought I would tease this bit here oh yes somebody told tell me about blue emu um but as i say i'm not doing anything at the moment i'm uh, because i've put my weight back on i'm going to do um i like to do a detox um, and you can't take pills with a detox uh, so because 
you can't do both it's impossible so um, I think I might go back to Slimming World I haven't decided yet I think I want a nice kind of a bit of a shadow under there so you can play with the pencil you can add as much or as little as you want um, but obviously there is going to be that's got to be a different shadow so I was going to I might just draw um, again I think I might just leave that have a natural shadow under there you do need a bit of a shadow under there otherwise you won't know that's a different one Whoopsie. Because this one's got to be very dark under here. So we'll have to see what happens. Does it not cross the bullet? I don't know. I think everything, everything, your, your skin is your biggest organ. Um, because there's a lot of things about uh, dyeing your hair when you're pregnant it goes to the baby because your skin up your hair absorbs your scalp absorbs it so I'm not quite sure um, I might have a look at that um, at the moment I don't have to do two beans to rub together because uh, I'm in trouble <laughs> I bought so many color books um, and I conned my husband into buying me a drawing tablet because I can't use these very well anymore so I'm in the doghouse <laughs> uh, again so my colouring things I've got this is what I've got so it will get very boring after a while because once you've seen somebody do one page you've seen them do them all It's, it's the joint damage uh, that the gout does, so you can't mend it. Once you get pseudo-gout in your hands, it's the joint that's damaged. So I don't think anything will put it back together again. And I'm not under a specialist, so there's nothing wrong with me. <laughs> there's my, my little bugger bear. But I've got a drawing tablet, so um, I might still be able to do oils and watercolours and things. So that's my New Year project, but I can't use a lot of the things yet. It's taken me quite a while. I quite like those. But I will have a look at that. I will have a look at that. I'll write it down because I've got a memory like a sieve. I'll write this. So I remember somebody said before, blue emu, isn't it? Yeah, blue emu. There's a, a Chinese dragon one as well that I've bought. But again, it's in a, it's in a pot. <laughs> I forget to do things. I forget to take pills. I'm, I'm really very, very bad. I just forget. And it's only when I get myself in such a tiz that I realise that I'd not have any painkillers. But I don't take the painkillers during the day. This is why I stream for four hours. I get up, I stream until uh, lunchtime or on a Tuesday is my day, so I carry on. And um, Thursday I stream till Emma comes on. And if Emma doesn't do a stream on a Thursday, because I used to do Tuesdays and Thursdays, then I'll stream all day till about seven. I do about six or seven hours. And that's quite good for me because it, it, it makes me not think about anything. And I'm sitting, drawing, not thinking about the pain. So I kind of get away with it a bit. Sometimes when I stand up, it's not funny. But, <laughs> but apart from that, it's okay. It's okay. Um... So I'm going to try and put these back in order because I like them in order. But purely because if they're in some kind of order, 
they're easier to find that's really the only reason it's not because I'm a bit of a lunatic it's just you know if you have your light olives next to your dark olives they're just that bit easier to find that's all so I do try to keep to keep them um, in order so I must have put some olives and some greens in the wrong place um, 18 goes Oh, mustard goes down there. 18 goes in there. I think that one goes in that one. Just trying to keep them in the right order, just so that they're easier to find. So it kind of I'll pan out and show you what I've done. I think so, yeah, it's it's pseudo gout. It's pseudo gout, which um how long have I been? Oh I've been an hour and forty minutes, so I'll just I'll stop the video and then I'll have a natter because it's it's boring for people who just want. So I'm just putting the pencils back into this little dough went. Um and I I haven't been away yet, so they're they're loose and I find them easier just to flip. So that's what I'm doing when you hear me flip. So there's three sides of ink tents, and on the other side I've got the graphy tint, the graphy the graphy tint, and then the I have the um, there's two sides of the pencil set that was the pastel portrait set. So there's some a few dark but mainly pale, uh, which I found really lovely. And then the other two sleeves have got the ink uh, the Derwent watercolor pencils. And I love them in this because there never is a pencil rolling around. Um, and then on the up the last side, I have the Derwent metallics and the Caran d'Ache metallics. But I think I'm going to give my daughter uh, the Caran d'Ache metallics, and I may even give my other daughter those. So I've got enough for some. Uh, I wanted some um, some pastels, um, but. I don't know, it depends. I'd love to put the pastel set into my little book of watercolours. I'll just lift that up really quickly. So before I stop waffling, I'll just say that we've been playing... Oh, the light suddenly changes again, look there. So that's what we've done so far. So we've got Derwent pastels on the back, literally as a pastel just kind of um, blended in and then ink tents at the front so they're kind of all going to pop out um, and then I'm going to do the same on the other side with the tree all ink tents and some floorboards and of course a bright rug here um, and I apologize for working in my Christmas book but I want to finish it so it has to be it has to be now <laughs> oh the color the colour's gone. How strange. So thank you for watching.